like to welcome you this evening to our wrap-up meeting for the Saginaw Urban Design Charette. All right? All right. It is a great day in Saginaw. We have some good news to share with you this evening. Hopefully you've been following in the news this process. Hopefully you were here last Friday when we had our kickoff meeting. We got off to, I think, a pretty um, energetic start for those who were able to join us. Um, before we get into this evening's program, and I apologize once again, um, we don't have copies of the program for everyone, so you'll have to trust me as usual. I will walk you through this and stick with the program as much as I can. Uh, but before we get started, I think it is very appropriate that we start with a moment of prayer for those who care to join in. We're going to invite Pastor Chris Pryor to come down and lead us in prayer. What a wonderful opportunity it is to be here with our bowed heads. Our kind and gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for this day you made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for this day and this night. We thank you for this team and the group of individuals who are here who represent our city. God, I pray, God, that you continue to bless us. We thank you for the fresh ideas that continue to come forth. We thank you for the building of the foundation that has been established, God, so that we can continue to grow. You can say, God, when the people of God who are righteously, the people rejoice. And God, I thank you for the transition of our city, how you're birthing new life. And we thank you for the meeting of minds of us coming together. God, I pray, God, that you continue to touch our hearts. I thank you for the increase of jobs. I thank you for the benefits, the paid vacation jobs. I thank you for the families who will come in, God, because of the birthing process. God, I pray that you continue to touch our hearts. We thank you for the unity that we'll have. God, I thank you for the minds that we'll bring together because of our intentions to please you. I thank you for our increased education. I thank you for the wealth that you'll bring into the city of Saginaw. I thank you for the uh, new uh, body and businesses and education and all that you'll bring to our city. I pray that you continue to touch us as leaders. Touch our government officials. Touch our education system. God, touch the business sector. God, we just thank you for doing it and meet every need. God, I pray that you even touch, not even our city as well, but touch the entire state of Michigan. God, that you will bless, God, and touch our leadership, our government officials. God, I even pray for those in the Philippines. God, that you will touch them and strengthen them. Show your love even in this tough time. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Pryor. Okay, so i, I got to come down here. I've already said welcome, but um, I have to tell you that I'm really excited, even more excited than I was last Friday. Last Friday, we talked about beginning a journey back to greatness for the city of Saginaw. And at that time, at least when the meeting started, it seemed like I was the only person who believed we could, could get there. I think by the end of the meeting, we had more believers in the house. Am I right? right. Well, if you had anything to do with this charrette over the last several days, you ought to be a believer by now. See, there you go. Got some believers in the back. Saginaw, we talked before about our grand history. What a great city this was to live in. I shared with you some of my fondest childhood memories, and I don't tell everybody about that. Well, yes, I do. But, um, and I tried to help you understand why Saginaw means so much to me. I found out that it means a lot to you, too. And that really makes me happy. We had a great turnout for the kickoff meeting on Friday. We have had a great turnout for every event that has happened during the, the process. Um, I was here on Saturday morning when we had workshops, invited the public out to share some ideas, your suggestions for what we can do downtown Saginaw. I was amazed at the tremendous turnout that we had. It almost brought me to tears. Well, maybe not, but I, I, my heart was warm. And I saw such diversity, Saginaw. We talked about a lot of our what makes Saginaw special before, last Friday. The fact that so many famous people have come from here. We talked about this spirit that runs through the area. And 
you guys coined a phrase that has caught on with me. Somebody said, this is really hard to bring back a city that has fallen on hard times like Saginaw. But I heard someone in the, in the audience whisper, they said, yeah, but we can do this. Didn't, didn't, didn't you hear that? And I heard it in my left ear. I said, I eased over. I said, it's, what, what did they say? person said again, we can do this. I thought, okay, maybe we can. And then I started, well, why are you saying that? They said, well, we can do this because we're Saginaw. Just because we're Saginaw. So then I repeated it. We can do this because we're Saginaw. All right. Now, how many people believe that? <laughs> yes, we can. Saginaw is not your normal American city. If it was, you wouldn't have a Tracy Parks coming from Saginaw. <laughs> In any case, what we did not have as of last Friday was a plan. And we knew that we had a team of professionals coming out to help us. We'd had the New Era Community Group working for months to try and organize us, the citizens, to go through this this new process called a design charrette, which some, for some people we just defined as of last Friday. And over the last five days, a plethora of creative, a plethora. I know what that means. I looked it up before I came here. That's why I use it. But a great many, that's what a plethora means, a great many ideas, creative ideas, from you, the citizens, okay? The design team didn't fly in here and just sort of lay out, here's what you need to do, Saginaw, I'll see you later. They talked to you. And I watched people from all demographic groups, um, young, old, wealthy, not so wealthy, you know, different ethnic groups, because, I mean, Saginaw, let's face it, this is a melting pot. Saginaw has diversity that other cities put together task force and forces and they go out and recruit to try and create the kind of diversity we have here in Saginaw just naturally. But, but everybody came out and people were just putting ideas on the table that even I hadn't thought of. And so um, the design team was tasked with pulling all this together and making some sense of it and putting together a plan that actually had a flow, if you will, had a vision, had a, um, some rhyme or reason. Now, without a plan, we could put up new buildings, we could bring in different businesses and erect amenities downtown, but, you know, I've learned from watching these professionals work that when you do that, um, sometimes it, it doesn't work out as, as well as it could because uh, you got the ice cream parlor over here, and the hot dog stand four blocks away. So people, people have to walk long distances to do things that really ought to be right next to each other. So I think what you're going to see tonight is, number one, a different vision for Saginaw, but also a flow and um, some identifiable zones, if you will, where different activities and amenities will take place. OK, so again, I'm really excited because I, I don't know everything you're going to see, but the, the, the parts that I have seen make sense. And I know that if we can, if, I'm not going to say if we can do this, when we do this, All right. we will have a much more vibrant, a much more attractive downtown area. Okay? So um, tonight we're going to hear from the design team, and they'll kind of go over some of the ideas they've laid out. But we're also going to have another one of our local pastors, uh, Pastor Tom Farley, is going to share some thoughts with you based on his experience having been a part of a design charrette in uh, Pasadena, California. So a charrette is something that is not new to the rest of the world. It's, this is done in cities all across America, and it, the process works. So again, um, I hope you are as excited as I am. If you're not, I'm going to keep talking, so you should pretend like you are, if you are not. Right. So let me ask, do you think that, now that we have a plan, which you're going to see tonight, and I'm so excited about, 
And I know some people are saying that I get excited anyway, because I was excited last Friday just to be here. But now that we have a plan, how many people believe that we have the wherewithal to pull together our, our resources, our enthusiasm, our energy, our creativity, and make the plan a reality. All right. All right. See what I mean, Sarah? We can do this because we're zagging on. All right. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up Sarah Lewis, who is the leader of the Design Charette team, just to give you a few words uh, from an outsider's perspective, because they've been observing us over the last week. And again, Saginaw, you made me proud, really proud. So, Sarah, tell us what you think. Thank you. Now, is that a dangerous opening or what? Sarah, tell us what you think. Boy, that's open-ended. I need to correct you, Tracy, because the design team didn't fly in from out of town. It was just me and John. Everybody else are Saginaw natives and Saginaw businesses, and in fact, downtown businesses. So I, I need to make sure that they get they get some props for TSSF Architects and, and uh, Kibby. They those guys have been amazing, and you'll, you'll see their you'll see their handwork. Um, and the other person that I'm going to give verbal hugs to, because I have been hugging him quite a bit all week, and I've met his wife, so she knows I hug him too. Abraham Allen. Rockstar. Rockstar. He has let us run Great Lakes Crossroads ragged. And for those of you that managed to come by the design studio at any point in time, it didn't look like Abraham's building for most of the, the, the five days of the charrette. We put it all back, we tried to clean up, but he has the patience of a saint. So, thank you. Um, the outsider's perspective that has, has blown me away, and obviously I've been doing charrettes for a number of years. I've, actually, this has been a particularly intense year as to the number I've done this year. Saginaw is the spirit of a small town in the casing of a city. And that's what makes this place special. We can talk about the physical design. We can talk about the river as an amenity. But seriously, I mean, look, look around you. The number of people that have come out and actually participated. It's not just a matter of showing up. It's actually participating. I get... Goosebumps. I actually met with um, Craig Gosling this afternoon, and it was just kind of funny because I'd already said it, and I am a hockey fan. I married a Canadian, but anyway, <laughs> I said, you know, I said to him, I'm like, I have the Saginaw spirit. I have the Saginaw spirit, and it is. It's just. It's it's exciting. The potential. It's it's huge. I mean, yeah, Tracy is excitable anyway. <laughs> but hopefully all of you can spearhead this. It's your plan. Hopefully you will see the different ideas that came out on Saturday. This is not something that, you know, sort of there's a couple of big ideas that, you know, the design team can look at and pull together as far as concepts go. But the main pieces of the plan, the important pieces that will become implemented are, are yours. They, they came from what we heard from you on Saturday morning and what we've heard over the course of the last few days. So while I can say thank you to the design team and be proud of the work that we've done, the folks that I'm really, really proud of are you. And hopefully you'll be proud of the plan that you see too. So be excited. So. Saginaw Spirit. Thank you, Sarah. Saginaw Spirit is contagious. Even they think we can do this now. And I know we can. Right? Because we're Saginaw. All right. All right I want to hear that. Okay, so now, um, again, some more perspective on 
design charrettes from past experience. I'd like to introduce you to you, Pastor Todd Farley from the First Congregation Church, which is located in beautiful downtown Saginaw. Before I had the opportunity of coming and moving here to, to uh, beautiful Saginaw, I lived in Pasadena, California, and was part of Fuller Theological Seminary, where I was artist in residence. And there at Fuller, we had a charrette for Pasadena, specifically redesigning the downtown area as Fuller was expanding into more of the community. And one of the things that was wonderful about it is that the charrettes always demand of us that we honestly look at who we are to realize our difficulties and our struggles. But they also equally balance who we can be. There has to be an acknowledgement of indeed the poisons, the difficulties, the struggles, the dangers that we face. But those don't define us. Those only say where we've been. They only tell the story of our past and indeed one of the things that's wonderful about our charrette is it tells us where we can go and what we can believe and what we can know we can become. And our community needs that faith not to define itself in its struggles, not to define itself as the difficulties that we've faced, but rather a people who persevered through those things that can look to a tomorrow with a vision. And as we look to it, to believe in that vision. Now, that's not going to happen. And, and we talked about this a little bit when I had an opportunity to see what was happening this weekend, and specifically this morning. It's not going to happen without you and me. All of us together, owning it together as a people, believing that we can make a difference in this city. Now, I'm just talking about it because we all know there are lots of people who are talking about it all the time. And everybody says, oh, they got their little kingdom over here and their little kingdom over there. It's not going to happen by us having kingdoms. It's going to happen by us uniting together and being one Saginaw, one people with one purpose and one idea. I'm excited. This is the first step. This is our rebirth. This is the beginning of what we can be if we together believe together. There's lots of reasons to doubt. There's lots of reasons to doubt. And I'm not asking us to doubt. I'm asking us to realize that hope is on the other side. That we have a promised land that we can take called Saginaw. And a people that can change and we have to be part of that change. It's not going to happen. Nobody else is going to pay for it for us. Nobody else is going to do the work for us. It's going to be our sweat and our sacrifice that makes this happen. When we realized that in, in California, when we realized that in other places, and I've heard about charrettes, it's, it, it's the, the desire to take charge and make a difference and to realize we already have the resources. We already have the creativity. We already have the leadership. We already have the people. It's just a matter of us saying, look, look at all the glorious, beautiful things that we can be. Believe and make it happen. Let this be the beginning of our good work together. Let this be the beginning of what can be and not just another group of people getting together to talk at one more time about what we should do and could have done. But now, let us make it happen. All right. Thank you, Pastor Farley. Gosh, I got goose pimples. Another believer in the house. Saginaw, I believe in you. I know that we are winners. It's in our history. It's in our creed. It's in our blood. It's in the water, along with this contaminated fish. It's, it's, it's in there. So, we've always had this spirit. And as Sarah mentioned, there was lots of local talent involved with this process. And I, I talked about people from out of town, but I was also very impressed with the local architects and designers who, lend, who loaned their talents to this process. And they are talented, believe me. Um, so, to lead us through the review of the, the charrette plan, Mr. Chris Bohinski from TSSF Architects along with Keith Kosick. 
And uh, these guys are smart, let me tell you. I, I talked to them. But they are from where? Saginaw. Saginaw. That's right. Thank you, sir. Well, first of all, I want to take uh, this moment to thank uh, Dolores McKinney and uh, Pam Parks for the opportunity to get up here and actually do that. Without them, we wouldn't have them. I want to say uh, Keith Kosick, Buzz Jernis, John Allard, Sarah Clark, Mike Faust, Craig Schneider. Thank you for all your work in getting this uh, plan together. So let's get started and uh, look at this plan. Uh, go ahead, Jamie. All right, the big idea. The big idea behind this uh, concept is bridging the river, creating uni a unified Saginaw. Um, as you can see, there are plenty of fingers, new connections across the river, um, bridging the river, returning the usage to uh, the river to the community. Um, the full build, the full to build out uh, concept plan. Uh, we're adding more than well, the proposed adding more than one more than 1.5 million square feet potential new commercial and residential development looking at this for the next five to 40 years and the market will drive the timeline as this happens. Um, stepping back a little bit and going back to uh, what we did on uh, Saturday morning, these are the ideas, these are the main five points that came out of uh, the community's ideas that everybody came out Saturday morning. It was great, great turnout. Uh, we're going to take advantage of the river as an interactive amenity and focal point. Increase downtown living possibilities with a variety of homes. Connect all types of transportation in a unified hub. Expand parks, trails throughout Saginaw. Connect the greenways. And create more opportunities for entertainment through Saginaw. First point, uh, take better advantage of the river. Uh, we're going to introduce some uh, river sports for all ages. Kayak rentals, canoe rentals, dragon boat races, just using the river. I mean, it's, it's an amenity that we don't use right now in Saginaw. We need, to continue, we need to bring that to fruition. That's probably one of the main points that we need to start doing. Um, adding new piers and docks for people to actually enjoy the river. Uh, it's an easy fix. All you got to do is put them in place and people will use them. Uh, this is a great idea that uh, may or may not work, but we'll try it. Washington, D.C. does it. Paris does it. Why not Saginaw? Now, uh, we've got a great island, Ojibwe Island. It get, it's used, get used by plenty of people a lot. I see a lot of people walking there every day. Why not use Lake Linton as a swimming pond? I mean, it's there. It's not on the river. So you don't, have to worry, you don't have to worry about the current, and that's the biggest challenge with the river. It's there. Hayden Hill Park does it. Why not Saginaw? Right. Uh, civic art. We have this great riverfront park that gets used sparsely right now, I'd say. I'm sure there's people that use it. I don't see, it, see that as much as Ojibwe Island, but it connects the entire river from... Johnson Street all the way to uh, Ojibwe Island. Um, let's add some art and bring back some uh, style and some uh, sculptural um, objects that kind of point back to Saginaw's heritage. I mean, something important that we should look toward. Second point, increase downtown living possibilities with a variety of homes and services. This is the residential area we've developed near St. Mary's um, just to support and strengthen existing neighborhoods, create new opportunities for a variety of residents. Some of these, I mean, this, this can be done. This is an easy, fast flash to add great homes to Saginaw. 
And why not uh, go a little bit taller, and make it look, look a little bit more regal with some new apartment buildings and townhouses. And then we can reuse what we have, and we're doing that right now, which is great news. This is a before picture of Jane Street as it stands right now. This is what it could look like. I'd look there. I'd love to look there. Connect all types of transportation in a unified hub. This is the big idea right here. Let's, uh, let's use our existing transit system. That's been set for years. We'll expand it. Let's uh, have some bike rental type things. That these, that these get used in small towns and big towns all over America. Let's, re let's utilize the trolley a little bit more. These are great ideas. This is the bike share program that I just spoke about. Um, I've seen it in Washington, D.C. It's, it's, it's a successful uh, venture, and it's also in small towns, too. Saigon taxis, that was another idea that came out of it. Um, I think we have a few taxi services around here, but why not car shares, too? That's another big idea that gets utilized around the country, too. And here's the trolley loop. This loop will take you from downtown to Old Town, back to downtown. So if you're working downtown, you want to eat in Old Town, you just jump on this trolley that goes around down Michigan Avenue, comes down to uh, Old Town, you can come back right across by Old Jamboree Island and back up, and there'll be points along the zoo, the art museum, all, all sorts of points. Great. Expanding our parks. Let's uh, look at that. Well, first of all, walkability of the streets. I mean, we've done a little bit of this throughout uh, the past 20 years or so. Let's expand it a little bit. Let's make Jane Street the cultural uh, avenue, the cultural boulevard. Let's uh, connect to the river in more, more than just the uh, bridges. Let's uh, connect with a new pedestrian bridge across the center of uh, Saginaw towards Sassa. Let's uh, add a bridge on to uh, the rail bridge that goes across the river. There's an example of that. It's done everywhere. It's done, in, it's done on all of the United States in different places. This is a before picture of the Riverside Park uh, area as it stands right now. Let's look at it after. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. create more opportunities for uh, entertainment and winter activities. Well, everybody's been calling for a farmer's market that's uh, more permanent. Let's do that. Easter market's a great example. This is the eastern gateway into Saginaw. Well, you probably noticed rallies is probably in the corner right there. <laughs> Got a park over here, the state building over here. Let's look at the after picture. How about that farmer's market? And then indoor sports complex. That was another great idea that came out of uh, Saturday morning. Let's bring some of these events downtown. Give people, give the youth something to do. Give people something to do and stay around Saginaw when they're here to visit. Entertainment district. Before and after. That looks nice right now. It could look better. How about that? Look at the movie theater in the back. New, new businesses, new uh, restaurants and bars along the sides of Washington Avenue there. Look at that big building in the front there, or in the very back. How do we implement this? Go ahead. How, through policy recommendations. Let's support the existing master plan, which I think this does. It just broadens it and 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 defines the downtown area a little bit better than the master plan did. So this is really supporting that master plan. Um, let's create a brand identity downtown. Make minor modifications to the zoning district, uh, change parking ratios. Things like that will improve uh, downtown accessibility and, and downtown travel and all that good stuff. Here's an idea. Let's uh, make Saginaw the city united. Just a little signage, branding identity would help to uh, 
just really brighten up downtown and make it feel like a safer place to be. Incremental redevelopment. Well, um, this is an idea of small projects that can be started just simply by support from existing residents. Then you uh, go a little bit bigger, joint ventures between organizations to get things done. And then bigger projects that take a little bit longer for, with phase development and construction, trading land and such to make things work for our plan. And then there's the five points again. This is the new vision for downtown, right here. No little surprise here that nobody's seen. Go ahead. This is the, uh, it's a little dark, but look at all those neon signs. That's looking down that same view of uh, Washington. Wow. Life in the city. Thank you, Chris. Be still my beating heart. Gosh, I don't know about you guys, but I was sitting over there just swooning. I mean, I, you know I already love Saginaw, right? But see, I've known for a long time that the secret to longevity in relationships is falling all in love all over again, right? Over and over. I'm sitting here looking at these pictures. This, this is my city. Right. I started falling in love all over again with Saginaw. Thank you, Chris and Keith and the team at TSSF. Great job. Great job. So listen, it's been said a couple times that the river could now become centerpiece for our great city. And it's true, other cities crave the opportunity to create an attractive riverfront. We've got a big wide river sitting right there that we could utilize in the ways that you saw described. And I just have to say this because last Friday I shared with you my memories of the city and they were all great fond memories but I left one little part out. Even though it was kind of in the back of my mind. You see, I grew up on the east side of Saginaw. And when I was a kid, I remember recognizing at a very young age that most of the people around me on the east side looked like, like I do. They were African Americans and Hispanic. And then on the west side of the river, I noticed, even as a small child, that most of the people appeared to be Caucasian. So isn't it ironic that the very river that once divided us could now become the centerpiece that brings us together? Right. Isn't it? So if you would indulge me just for a minute, a couple minutes, I want to share with you a little story that came into my head as I was listening to the team kind of talk about this dynamic here in Saginaw. Imagine, if you will, a group of people who find themselves suddenly at a drift at sea in a small boat. And on this boat, there's really three different groups of people. And they, they start to kind of separate themselves, even in a small boat. At the front of the boat, or the bow, you had one group who, just by way of how they landed in this place, had control of the rations and the water that was on the boat. And so they would take what they needed to eat and give very little to the other two groups on the boat. A second group who congregated in the middle of the boat were in charge of rowing. So they were in control of moving this boat. And then there was a third group that all congregated in the back and they had control of the rudder that steers the boat. And that's fine, except that these three, group, three groups had different ideas of where the boat should go. The group controlling the rudder felt that the way home was to go west, while the group that was rowing the boat was convinced that the way home was to go east. Meanwhile, you got the group up front that's hogging the food and the water. And so it's not 
It's not hard to imagine that what was really happening here, again, a drift at sea with no compass, the boat was going around in circles, and they could not see the shore. And so one day, a helicopter appeared above, and they spotted this little boat, and they, they hovered over top, and they said, hey, you guys got a problem down there? Are you stuck? And the people said, yes, can you help us? And they said, well, we didn't come prepared with rescue gear, so we can't we can't really rescue you, but I tell you what, we can help you out. We're going to lower down to you a map that will show you the way to the nearest city. They said, fine, send it on now. We'll get there. They opened up the map, and sure enough, here was the, the, the chart to a glistening, gleaming city that sat on the banks of a golden shore. And so everybody got excited. It took them about two minutes to realize, well, wait a minute. If we're going to get to this great city on the Golden Shore, we have to work together. We simply cannot get there the way we're doing it today. So I submit to you, my friends, that this team has come along and lowered down to us the map to show us the way to the Golden Shore. But Saginaw, if we're going to get there, since we're all in the same boat, we have to start working together. Right. Would you agree? Right. I think so. So with that, and I didn't mean to bring you down, <laughs> because you know, we are still Saginaw, all right. and we can do this. We can, do it. we can work together. So bring this to a close. I'm going to bring up the president, CEO of New Era Community Group. This happens to be my lovely wife, <laughs> Ms. Pamela Parks, to give us a few closing remarks. All right. Thank you very much, Tracy. for not keeping us too long. <laughs> In closing, there's a lot of people that I would like to, to thank. Um, and I just would like to take some time to just kind of reiterate some of the things that were said this evening. Um, we together believe together. Let's make this happen. Saginaw, we need your help to make this a reality. New Air Community Group will be having a public meeting probably within the next 30 to 45 days. I'm hoping that we have everyone's email address and phone number. And at this time, I would like to say a special thanks for Abraham Allen. <laughs> Abraham Allen is the owner and operator of Great Lakes Crossroad. And he has lent his facility for five days for their urban design charrette and uh, th two days for the um, educational forum that, that took place back in October. So Abraham, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. There's a few other uh, folks that I would like to acknowledge as well. Um, Michigan State Extension, they have allowed us to use their facility for the National Charette Institute. Three-day training was, the, we, was held there with no charge. I have a niece, her name is Nikel Terry, and she has assisted us with uh, the press releases. And I would like to also thank her. She's a product of Saginaw Public Schools as well, and she graduated from Michigan State. <laughs> TV5 News coverage, would like to also thank them. Saginaw Chamber of Commerce for allowing us to use their boardroom for our weekly meetings over the last four months. Don Morrell, she's the owner of Don of a New Day, a coffee shop located on Washington Avenue. Great coffee, sandwiches, and salad. I would also like to thank her for allowing us to use her facility. Norm Braddock um, has allowed us to use the SVRC for the kickoff and the final presentation. We'd like to thank him. 
Ken Bloom, the owner of Tim Hortons, who provided us with donuts for the three-day National Charette training back in October. Pastor Wathen for taking the Education Committee to another level. At this time, I would really like the Design Team, Infrastructure Committee, and the Planning Committee to come up here, please. guys have been working I, I just can't thank you enough we've been meeting for the last four months weekly and is Veronica up there yeah. Yeah. okay we've been meeting for the last four months and I just want to thank you for your hard work your dedication and your commitment and lastly Lastly, I would just like to thank the public for coming out to support. Your presence at the public workshop really touched my heart, and I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. So that brings us to the close this evening. Once again, um, I'll reiterate what Pam said. We can't thank you enough for the public support for this project. It was truly outstanding. And at the end of the day, Saginaw, uh, we will be able to say that we pulled together to bring our city back. So it is all about you, not only in terms of the plan, but the implementation. We now have to roll up our sleeves and get to work. Now, mind you, uh, I'm sure some folks are wondering, well, where's all this money going to come from, right? Well, I can tell you that I had conversations with a couple of uh, developers and potential investors in our community, and they're interested. And the wonderful thing about having a plan such as this, um, our city officials, city planners, can now talk with potential investors and show them how there are business adjacencies and there's a flow for the entertainment district, the residential district, you saw that here, for the, um, um, the farmer's market and uh, a hotel was in the, was in the, in the uh, plan. So rather than going to uh, real estate developers and just saying, hey, come and build a, a building in our downtown somewhere, we can now say, for your particular business, this is what our plan would suggest. Right here on this street, adjacent to other business that will bring in a flow of customers to help your business succeed. So city planners can take this, this plan and go and meet with uh, developers. But we the citizens, well, let me just go back to the city. A, a, a word about safety. It wasn't mentioned here, but we talked about it. Now is the time for us to start looking at how we may need a little more police patrols in the downtown area, okay? <laughs> Cities like Detroit, which are, is not exactly considered a safe city, when you go downtown to their events where they do have an Eastern market and hotels and restaurant district, theater district, there is a strong police presence. So I'm not here to put the city officials on the spot, but I think that's a pretty common element for or cities that have brought back their downtown. So we need to, you know, seriously think about that. But as the citizens, we need to recognize that developers and potential investors are going to start to ride through our city now, taking a look. So we can start to clean up the downtown area. We can put together clean up days to go and clean the park that we showed on, this, on these drawings. We can clean up block by block. We can
can organize things like neighborhood watch programs to patrol our own streets. Basically start to get ready for these folks who are going to ride through and, and, and uh, consider our city for investment. So that's something we can do right away without any additional funding. I just wanted to throw those suggestions out there to let you know that we are realistic about the fact that a lot of what we showed you tonight will require people who are interested in investing. I think uh, the city officials are well aware of what we've been talking about here, so they're going to start looking at potential infrastructure changes that would make this plan more um, uh, implementable. We've got our zoning manager. Where, where is our zone? Right here, Mike. He's on the team. So he's been involved right from day one. So we're looking at the, the infrastructure, the, the sewer lines that run under, this, under the city streets. And um, where are the utilities? Yeah. Right. So this plan is not just above ground. There's consideration for what's underground as well. So with that, I have to challenge you, Saginaw. You know I'm already in love, right? With the city of Saginaw? Don't break my heart. <laughs> Let's go and make this happen. Right? And I got to say, we can do this. Because we're Saginaw. Thank you very much for coming out this evening. We appreciate you. Everyone have a great evening.